Hi, I'm Creston, and in this tutorial, we're going to cover using PostgreSQL replication using PG Rewind. Now, this tutorial assumes you already have streaming replication set up. If not, look at the tutorials that are included in the show notes to help get you up to speed. First, we're going to go over a few slides that explain some concepts, and then we're going to jump into the command line to show you how it's done. All right, let's talk about PostgreSQL replication failback with PG Rewind. So by failback, I mean you, you want to reuse an older primary database after you have done a failover. So you have a primary database and a replica, and you promote that replica, so you fail over to that replica. But now you want to reestablish that old primary and bring it up itself as a replica of the new primary. Essentially, we're calling that failing back to the old primary. So this is easy to do if you ensure that no writes have taken place on the old primaries after the promotion event. So as long as no writes happen, you can make it become a new replica of the new primary without too much difficulty. And I have a previous tutorial on that. The other option of course is to restore the database from a backup and then start syncing with the new primary. However, if you want to reuse that primary and if writes have happened, there's a way around that using PG Rewind. So PG Rewind is a utility that synchronizes the data directory with the directory it was forked from. So essentially, PG Rewind means you're rewinding or removing transactions. So be sure to keep this in mind. So again, the scenario is you have a primary database and a replica. That replica, replica gets promoted. But on that old primary, if there are any transactions to it and you want to set that up as a new replica, you essentially have to re rewind or essentially remove those transactions. So essentially you're erasing data if you're using this tool. Be sure you're aware of that before you decide to use PG Rewind. And basically it makes that old primary match the state of the new primary at the time of promotion. So if any writes have happened since that promotion event on that old primary, they'll, they will be lost if you're using PG Rewind. All right, so in terms of the example we're going to run through, we're going to have a master, or I should say primary and a replica set up and actively doing replication. We're going to promote the replica cluster. Uh, we're going to write data to the uh, main database cluster. And then we're going to shut down the main cluster and prep it as a replica. We're going to run PG Rewind to actually rewind rewind the data that was written to the main cluster, bring it up in sync with a primary, or I should say the current primary, and then we're going to promote the old primary cluster, uh, which is main again, and then reuse the replica cluster as a new replica. So everything goes back to the state it was before the failover events occurred. All right, let's jump into the live example. Okay, for this example, I'm going to be using Ubuntu, and I've installed Postgres QL 10. I have a primary database cluster called main that's on port 5432. I have a replica DB cluster called replica on port 5433, and this is actively doing streaming replication from the main database cluster using a replication slot. I have a test database that exists with a post table and two posts in it. And when setting this up, make to use PG Rewind, make sure your, your PostgreSQL conf file has wall log hints on. Now I demonstrated how to set this up in two previous tutorials. One was on streaming replication and another was on replication slots. I will include links to those tutorials in the uh, show notes for this tutorial. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and review the data. I'm going ahead and uh, use this where, where I'm logged in as the Postgres user. And I'm going to run this command to look at the post table. 
and this is on the replica, but it shouldn't matter. So we see it has these two posts in it. Now the first thing I want to do is actually promote the replica to be the new primary and take a look at the logs. All right, we can see we received the promote request. It selected a new timeline on ID 15 and database system is ready to accept connections. So now on the old primary, I'm going to insert some data. So this will cause problems when we bring it up as a new, try to bring it up as a replica. Okay, so some data is inserted after uh, this database cluster was promoted. So let's bring up the main database cluster as a replica. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stop main database cluster. And I want to make sure that we have this recovery.conf file. And I want to go ahead and create a replication slot for the main cluster on the new primary one. Okay, so that slot's been created. Now let's try starting it and see what errors we're going to get. Okay, so we can see fatal, could not start while streaming, requested starting point on timeline 14 is not in the server's history. So basically it's producing this error because of that data we inserted after the point that the new primary was promoted. So that's what's causing this issue. So to get around it, we can use PG Rewind. So the first thing I'm going to do is stop the main database cluster because we need to rewind that to match the point that the replica database cluster took over. And I'm going to use PG Rewind. It is not in a path statement, at least in Ubuntu with the default install, so I have to use the absolute path here to run PG Rewind. The target PG Postgres data directory I'm looking for is where the main database cluster is. The source, I'm doing uh, using connection information to connect to the database cluster running on 433, and I'm going to be using the Postgres user, and I'm asking for progress as it does the rewind. So I'm going to go back here and run that. You can see it's doing what it needs to do, uh, syncing with the target data directory, and it is done. Now, this synchronizes data directories, so we need to be check what our recovery.conf file did. So again, we're looking in the main directory for the recovery.conf file, and we see it's empty. So it overwrote what's in that directory. It is literally synchronizing with the new primary what its directory looks like. So we actually need to set this up again. So that's just something to keep in mind. So when you use PG Rewind, definitely set up this file after you do the rewind step. So now that that recover.conf is set up correctly, we can try starting the main cluster and verifying it's in sync. Okay, we can see it is entering standby mode uh, started streaming wall from the primary on timeline 15. Uh, and database is ready to accept read-only connections. So this main database cluster is now synchronized with the new primary uh, replica DB cluster. And if we take a look at the data, it should just have those two posts in it. And just has the, just those two posts. All right, let's fail back to the main cluster as primary. So it's set up as a replica now, but I want to fail back to it. Now to avoid using PG Rewind, I'm just going to use the easy method and stop the replica first to make sure no data is inserted after we're promoting the main database cluster. 
So stopping the replica, which is the current primary. Now I'm going to promote main to be the primary. And just check the logs. I see receive the promote request. Uh, archive recovery complete. Database system is ready to accept connections. So now if we insert some data into the primary, we see it is inserted. It's no longer read-only. And it should have three rows. And that other row that we inserted, 102, is not there. And that is correct. So it was rewound and not produced, or essentially lost from what was inserted after the promotion event. So keep that in mind when you're using PG Rewind. Now let's go ahead and set up uh, the replica again as a replica. So because the recovery.conf exists, I'm just going to, excuse me, recovery.done exists, I'm just going to copy, copy it to recovery.conf. And I'm going ahead and start the replica, make sure it's in sync. And we see that the replication slot replica does not exist. So let's take a look at what the replication slots look like on the primary. Okay, we see we have a main replication slot on the main database cluster that is not active. So what's happening? Again, going back to PG Rewind, it's synchronizing the directories. So it's synchronized with the replica DB cluster, which had a main replication slot set up. So it essentially copied that over. So what we're going to want to do is remove this replication slot and replace it with a replica one. So again, just something to keep in mind if you're using replication slots in PG Rewind, uh, you have to keep close track of what's going on with regard to these slots as well because the directories get synchronized. So I'm going to drop the replication slot main and create the physical replication slot replica. Okay, so that's dropped and the replica is added. So now if we take a look at the log files for the replica, we could see that it started streaming the wall from the primary. And if we take a look, we should see those three posts on the replica now. And we do. So everything is back to normal, essentially. I hope this has been helpful. If you want the commands used in this tutorial, be sure to visit the link in the description below. If you want to receive additional content and tutorials, be sure to visit scalingpostgres.com. Thanks.